gypsy moon I wandered near and far Looking for the mystery Beneath the northern star Looking for the pot of gold At the rainbow's end Hoping that I'll find it soon Hi, welcome to Be My Guest. This is Jan Lewis from Wells, Maine today. We have uh, Maine and it took you about two hours, right? About two hours. Okay, when I say we have people from all over New England, I mean it. <laughs> and we have them from New York City too. So we have the author E.J. Stevens and she has written the book. It's spooky cover, looks like well, it's a guy. It looks like a, a. What would you describe him on? It looks like a ghost in a black outfit on a on a horse. Uh, right. Well, in this book, our, our female protagonist Ivy Granger, her her, the villain that's coming to her city that she needs to defend the innocent humans from, is actually the Lord of the Hunt from the Wild Hunt, and that is the dark figure on the horse, the horse with the the yeah. flaming red eyes. Yes, it's a very spooky. Cover. Did you do now? This was you self published, right? Self published. So you chose this. I did. I did. I, I actually am very fortunate. I have a lot of control over my covers. That's why I like self-publishing and then yeah. the create space. I can't say it enough, you know. I mean, if you're starting out and you're new, why wait to be rejected for a whole year? Get out there. Right. You know, and then your book takes off and then the publisher's like, hmm, now they're going to take an interest. Exactly. Um, and a lot of uh, friends uh, who also self-publish, they end up eventually hybrid publishing exactly. because there's nothing saying that your next series couldn't be picked up by a large publisher. So this is the first one. And it's Ivy Granger's Psychic Detective. Um, actually, this is the fifth in the series. The fifth in the it's series. my fifteenth novel. When did you begin writing? Um, professionally, seven years ago in September. Do you have little ones at home? I do not. No, oh, yeah, I so just have a corgi, my furry baby. You're a little furry. Yeah. Do you have, do you have a uh, job outside of writing? No, I write full time. You do it full time. Yep, and I do fifteen conventions a year. So that's a large part of of my time management is actually going to public appearances. So you are going down south pretty soon, right? Yes, I'm going to Dragon Con in Atlanta. Dragon Con. Yeah. Dragon Convention. Yes. And that's for the. Um, the uh, mystery fantasy writers? Yes, it's all speculative fiction, so you have horror, fantasy, science fiction, mm. and we also have a lot of panels um, dealing with television shows, so we have some of your oh, favorite celebrities, like, like Tom Meissen from Sleepy Hollow, we have people from Firefly, people from Dark Matter, so a, if you are into paranormal, urban oh. fantasy, science fiction. There's a lot of wonderful writers and celebrities oh, from their favorite shows. You just made me think of one of our favorite authors. She is a uh, paranormal investigator, Joni Mahan. She, okay. She's an author. I believe she m might have been, correct me, Joni, but I think I, she was up at, um, she may have been up at the expo that we talk about. I, may, I don't know how we exactly that we met, but boy, we just also had a crew on that have written the uh, abandoned asylums in Massachusetts. Excellent. Very yeah, and they did a presentation. Do you give a lot of presentations? I do. I do workshops and panels, and I'm actually beginning teaching uh, some new workshops in November with teaching. the yeah with the River City Writers. Okay. We're beginning in all Sundays in Haverhill in November and then again in January uh -huh. and my specialty will be classes on self-publishing and on book marketing and with book marketing that's open to everyone in the industry mm -hmm. because even if you're traditionally published a lot understanding how to market your book and mm -hmm. build an author platform is important this is what uh, I've done as for a publicist everyone. for authors yeah yes. you know they say well I'm gonna go with a big name publisher and we're like well you may go with them and you may underlined get yeah. accepted but once they accept you, that's it. You right. don't get a publicist. You know, and that's where a lot of us who do that type of step in and I, you get them scheduled to appear places, but they don't quite understand that. Right. They think, no, 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 I'm gonna go with, I'm like, and then, you know, a year later, they're still waiting. Right. I'm like, you could, why don't you just go for it? Exactly. And launch it. What made you decide, wait, wait a minute, isn't there a group up there the horror writers? I'm a member of the, um, the main horror writers, the New England horror writers. There's quite a few wonderful groups yeah. in, Are you in the area. you belong to all of them? I do. I, thought, I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the Horror Writers of America and CIFWA, which is the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers Association, yeah. and the Paranormal Romance Guild and Broad Universe. And Broad Universe is for promoting 
women in whether they're female authors or editors um, in the industry who are writing and editing speculative fiction. That's, yeah. I mean, did you go to college and learn uh, English? Did you major in...? Uh, my major was psychology, but I minored in English, yeah. and I've always been a writer and love storytelling. Ever since you were little? Ever since I was little. Before I even knew how to write, I was telling spooky stories. Were you illustrating them too? I did a lot of that. I'm not. I, that's not where my talent lies, but yeah. I, I really enjoy. I do that a lot with my world building when I'm designing a world. I'll yeah. do the geography and do the maps. Um, if someone's looking for someone who does beautiful maps, Catherine Scully out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine actually does beautiful fantasy maps. But for myself, I, I'm more of a stick figure talent when yeah. it comes to drawing, but I, I do love sketching out my characters, yeah. creating character sheets, and building the world. I think when we were coming into the parking lot up at the um, Danversport Expo, I tend to look at the uh, license plates. That must have been, was you have an SUV? Did no, actually, I, I don't. I saw a Maine. And I don't know, but I saw one with Maine on it. Of course, you're going to see Connecticut, where they come from everywhere, Rhode right. Island. And here I complain about, what, the hour and a 15 or hour and a half to get up there. I'm not a good traveler, but uh, a lot of people come from all over the world. Oh, yes. And they think nothing of it. Yeah. And, you know, I try to tell them, they say, well, I, I, I'm not going back because I didn't sell anything. I'm like, you can don't look at it that way because you could bring someone with you so you can get up and walk right. around and get to know the other ones, exchange cards, because they're going to network with you and you're going to maybe find somebody who's interested in what you write and you've made a gig, you've, 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 you know, you've already made a match. Exactly, and if you're self-publishing, it's a wonderful way to meet narrators for your audiobooks, yeah. meet translators. Do you have an audiobook? I do. For um, this? All of the Ivy Granger books, uh, there are five novels and two novellas. Four of the novels and two of the novellas are available in audiobook. Mm -hmm. Houndsbite just released an ebook and trade paperback in July. Yeah. That will be available in audiobook by February. Psychic Detective. Yes. Now you said there's this is the fifth one? The fifth full length novel in the series. This is the latest one in the series. Right? Yes, that just released in July. And is there another one coming up in the series? Yes. Um, the next will actually be an anthology, uh, Tales from Harbor's Mouth. That will include the two novellas and three exclusive short stories. How do you do all this? I mean, little novellas are, are little bits, like bites of what this is, right? Right. They're usually between thirty and 40,000 words. Okay. They can be between 20 and 40, but... Um, yeah, do you write usually. physically, or do you get in the computer and do it? I do it on the computer. Okay. Yeah, I can actually type very, very fast. Yeah. My handwriting is very, very slow, and, yeah. and I think too fast to write it down. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I do it on the computer, and I, I, anyone who knows me knows I'm a planner. I love my spreadsheets and my plot boards, and when it comes to planning out series, I usually have things planned two to three years in advance. Yeah. So I have my deadlines and where I'm, where I'm so aiming. So you already know where you're going <clears> to <throat> be right. that far in advance. Right. Like, I have three series. One is completed. Mm -hmm. I have a, the Spirit Guide Young Adult Paranormal series. Mm -hmm. was a five-book series. That was my first yeah. full series. Um, the Ivy Granger series, and then I also have the Hunter's Guild series, which is a spin-off from this series. This okay. Yeah, so one of the young female hunters who was introduced early on in this series. She was a very strong character with a very strong backstory and it really felt like she her story needed to be told. Yeah. So she was she did something that upset the guild and she was sent off to Europe. And this this series takes place in a fictional city called Harbor's Mouth yeah. in the United States. Almost like Danvers Port. It is very, very similar. Yeah. You can tell that I grew up in New England. It has a where lot did you, of... Where did you go from? I grew up in Agunquit, Maine, in southern Maine. Okay, and now you have been... You said you lived in Portland. I lived in Portland. Do you remember... Do you know, have you been by the main, the uh, main medical center there? Oh, yes. yes. Well, there was Maine General. Right. Was, it's on Bram Hall Street. Yes. Dr. Bram Hall literally delivered, delivered like brought me oh, to this world. Oh, okay. I don't know if he, he was probably elderly, an older doctor then. I doubt, maybe he is, but he's old. He's a, but I remember the story. We didn't stay long. We moved to Springfield, Mass. from there. I think as my father worked his way up the company, 
we had to go where he had to go. Right. So we went to Springfield, Mass. And I was born in, well, not born, but I was raised in Springfield. So you were originally from Algonquin. Were you born in Algonquin? I, well, I was born in Portsmouth, but I, I was li- my family was living in Algonquin. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom had just moved here from Wales. Wales, England? Uh, yeah, at Wales from the United Kingdom. She um, So I actually grew up, when people a lot of times they'll ask, um, where did your fascination with yeah. dark fairies and that's folklore, it. that's where that came that's from. It's like King Arthur, right? Yes, my, my mother and my grandmother, uh, they love telling me. And a lot of these tales that are told to children, they sound very dark, mm-hmm. but at the heart of them, they're fables that have a lesson. And so there may be something like Jenny Greenteeth or the Grindelow that live in the river and will eat the children who, who stray too close to the water's mm-hmm. edge. But that's really a tale informing children, don't get too close to the water's edge because accidents can happen. But it, as a young child, something like a Grindelow or Jenny Greenteeth really stays with you. And those stories really stayed with me. So as a storyteller, I was very drawn to those original ghost stories and folklore and fairy tales. So later on, I did a lot of research. Um, If anyone's ever interested in more of those tales, uh, I highly recommend the works of Catherine Briggs. She did um, The Anatomy of Puck and Fairies and Folklore in Literature. And she did a few encyclopedias of of, um, some of the oral tradition uh, fairy tales and folklore from that area. AJ, how can people get a copy of Hound's Bite? Okay, well, the ebooks and trade paperback are available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, iTunes. The trade paperbacks are also in, uh, available internationally at the Book Depository. They, the audiobooks in this series are available on iTunes, Amazon, and Audible.com. Hounds Bite, I love it. Yes. That, do, you, do you actually do the audiobook yourself? Do you read it? I do not. I actually have professional narrators. I be good at it, though. Why pay somebody when you've got the voice? Well, actually, my, my, I, if you're familiar with anime at all, the company Funimation uh, releases the English dubbed releases of, of anime in the United States. So it's got a British accent. Well, uh, they have all accents okay. available, and they're very talented, and they're very good with their timing mm-hmm. and their accents and being able to really be theatrical and bring the characters to life and I was I was very fortunate that in the series I have very wonderful narrators and they really bring bring all of the characters to life now you're the okay so you don't have so you chose the you chose the cover I did choose the cover I had a lot to say about the cover Mm -hmm. the titles the series names um, all of the things that when you're traditionally published usually someone else is making those sorts of decisions you know what I mean, all a lot of us who will look in the back of a book, what are we doing? Not only to read right. about the book and maybe a few reviews, but I'm looking for your picture and I didn't find it. Oh, well, it's, it is available on my website okay. um, right. and in my media kit online, but yes, it wasn't on, on this particular book. Rabid yes. Reads gives her the review, highly recommended to adult urban fantasy fans. Praise for the Ivy Granger series. The Ivy Granger series is fantastic by their review, Bitten by Books. Now, I haven't heard of this group, Bitten by Books. Um, Yes, it's another book blog online. There are some wonderful book blogs online, um, and they've actually reviewed, I think, all of the books in the Ivy Granger series so far. Are you, so you, with everything you've already done, you said you've got another one in the works, right? I do. I also have Blood Right in this series, book um, book six. The six full-length novel will be out next July. Mm-hmm. And um, Hunting in Paris, the next book in the Hunter's Guild series, will be out next year. Mm-hmm. And I actually have a new series that's coming out next what year. What is that? That series is the Whitechapel Paranormal Society series. Ooh, a paranormal society? Yes, and that's set in Victorian England. Oh, okay. And it does have demons and ghosts and the paranormal, but it's more of a historical book. Or heck of historical fiction. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually in, the, in deep into the research for that. Right I was going to say, you've got to have the patience to go out, one of my guests today, to do the research into this type of thing. She's into historical research and right. that type of thing. A lot of us might not have the patience for that. Right. Um, as far as 
the history of a town or a place. Now, with a person, that's different. Right. But this day, you're going to have to do the whole what research for the area that you do? Right, and I, I really enjoy that. I actually did that, um, if anyone's read the Hunting in Bruges, the first novel in the Hunter's Guild series, the spinoff of the Ivy Granger series, I went to Bruges, Belgium mm -hmm. for two weeks and did research for that. I had done a lot of online and library research originally, mm -hmm. but I really feel like if you can go on-site to the location, meet the people, see the architecture and there are things like smells and sounds yeah. that you can't read about mm -hmm. uh, and then I try and take that and put those into yeah you're my not going to find that on the computer right you're not be able to sense the smells and the good things around you exactly that's why I try to encourage more people getting out there stop enough you know you've done all you can you know now get out there in person right because so many people are relying on the computer you're going to be standing out because you are out there more. Right. Some people say, well, I can't do it. I'm like, you just talked with me for half an hour, and you did a great job promoting yourself. Go for it. Yeah, and it was a wonderful experience, and I actually was uh, one of the local newspapers there interviewed me, and that was a wonderful there experience. There, uh, where you went? Yes, in, in, in Belgium, and I will actually be next year um, doing conventions in Germany and Italy and Austria to promote the uh, the German and Italian releases, translations of the Ivy Granger Gosh, series. Gosh, be careful. You're doing a lot of international traveling, girl. Yeah. Your mom and dad must be biting their fingernails. Yeah, I did Dublin this year, uh, but mm -hmm. yes, a lot more next year. Watch out. Just yeah. If there's, this, you know what I mean, if there's more, more problems coming, I wouldn't. Well, actually, the thing that, that f I did have one scare this year. I was invited to be a guest um, on a paranormal documentary and it was filming in Bruges um, and when the bombing happened at the Brussels airport yes. I was supposed to be in that airport at that time on that Oops. day but we had a last minute change. change of plans and something fell through and I was not there that day and that that day it really did bring it close to home because yeah. I, I really was scheduled to be in that So in what that would terminal. it take to get you to rethink some of this? You got but a lot I, of people here in I, America that like to be in. I know, but I, I'm doing what I love. Yeah. I'm very passionate about the genre and of what I write. I love writing, I love meeting other writers, I love yeah. meeting readers. Yeah. For I know some sometimes writers can be very solitary people. Have them come here. <laughs> Think but, about you. Yeah, but I really do love traveling. And you don't doing, mind getting on that plane and going? I really don't. I, I love traveling. I love uh, exploring and going on adventures to new places, and I always become more and more inspired when I do that. And so that will help you write your next books and all this. Exactly. And so this next one is a going to be a series on paranormal, almost a historical Victorian, you said? Yes. Paranormal. That sounds very interesting. Yes. Is there going to be a main... Uh, well, there probably is definitely going to be a main character. Is it going to be a woman or a guy? The main character will be a woman, and in this one, have you ever seen the BBC series Blenchley Circle? Uh, because no. this is compared a little bit to being like a Victorian Blenchley Circle with demons and ghosts. Mm -hmm. It, but in Blenchley Circle, it's a BBC show in which you have a group of women who during the war were code breakers. Yep. But it takes place after the war, and they start seeing patterns within their community of a possible murder and oh, murderer. Wow. And because they're so gifted mm -hmm. at putting together the pieces, yeah. they're solving something, but, but their role in society historically at that time, once they're not working for the war office anymore, they don't have the power to do very much about sure. it. Yeah. And in this, it's very similar. In Victorian times, women could not own property. Yeah. They did not have the same kind of say in society that we have today. So you have women who in this, they had been part of a paranormal unit working for the Crown as a special branch for the police department. But that has been disbanded. And they've gone into domestic life, and they start to see patterns of demons returning to Victorian London. Okay, now we get fantasy. The yes, okay. this is the, the fantasy paranormal okay. side of things. Okay. But it's very similar to historical events, and I, I also like to address the role of the woman in, yeah. in the book, even though it's fantasy, mm -hmm. and sometimes it can be a fictional city or fictional sure. events. And you must have fun making it up. Oh, it's absolutely fun wonderful. Yeah, yes. that type of, how many books do you think will be in this series? The new series, I have six planned. Okay, how close are you to finishing the, the, the first one? The first one and a prequel novella are almost done. 
and I do write very fast. It you usually, must. It usually takes me about a month and a half. Once, I, once I've done the research and I sit down to write, it takes me a month and about a, a month and a half to write the novel. I think you are the fastest author I've ever <laughs> had. I mean, I've heard maybe six months, that type of thing, but a month and a half. Are you a night owl? Um, well, once I once I actually start writing, I don't sleep very much. Oh, my God. I, I'm very driven, and I and I become very very wrapped up in what I'm doing. <laughs> I really, to be. but I do. Like I said, I love what I'm doing. I, I absolutely love living well, in these worlds. The cover of this one, this is A.J. Stevens and her Granger psychic detective novel, Ivy Granger. The cover, it's called Hounds Bite, and the cover is a black horse with the red like on fire eyeballs. And then it looks like, well, a ghost, but in a black garb with the red fiery eyes. And then you see like a castle in the back. And it's all mysterious with the birds or the hawks flying. And it's all blended almost into a fog. Yes. So you did, you got it across really well. I saw Thank this, you. when I got this in the mail, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know, this, <laughs> this girl's going to go over the top. How, what made you think of Hound's Bite again? What made you think of that? Well, actually, in... In some of the traditional folklore, mm -hmm. there are the wild hunt, her and the hunter is in charge of the, the wild hunt, and the wild hunt has hounds. Mm -hmm. But I, I twisted a bit of the folklore, and there are fairy black dogs. In this, there's also something called the bar guest yeah. from folklore. I made the hounds bar guests, and oh, they're very similar yeah. to hell hounds, yeah. very powerful fairy beasts. Yeah. I know, so they, they took the little pieces in Hounds, and they're always, why are they featured so much? Like, I think Sherlock Holmes had a book. Yes, oh, Hound of the Baskervilles. The Hound of the Baskervilles, yes. I loved that as a kid. Yes. Okay, so that's got the same aura. Right, and that's the kind of atmospheric dark supernatural mysteries and suspense that I grew up with. Things like Edgar Allan Poe's Murder in the Rue Morgue and Conan Doyle's Hound of the Baskervilles. I love, I, that's, re between those and the, the folklore and fairy tales that I was told from my family, yeah. that all came together in this wonderful tapestry yeah. of, of stories and atmosphere that I really think built the foundation on, on what I write today. EJ, we have a few minutes left. Where are you, when you come back from down south, what, when are your next gigs in this New England area? Okay, in New England, let's see. I will be doing a reading on September 22nd in Salem, Massachusetts. That's and appropriate. Yes, oh, Salem, yeah. Massachusetts, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, that will be wonderful. That's at Koto. Is that near Halloween? Gonna, is that going to be near Halloween? September 22nd. Close so enough. really, <laughs> Yes, yes, that will be wonderful. Um, then I go to Louisville for Imaginarium over Columbus weekend, but I do return to New England. I'm doing the Merrimack Valley Book Festival, and that's in Haverhill. That's, I believe, October 21st mm -hmm. at the Haverhill Public Library. Yeah. Then I'm leaving again for World Fantasy, which will take me right through Halloween, and that's in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, and then you're coming back to New York. And then I come back, and I'm teaching classes on self-publishing and classes on book marketing through the month of November. Up in Maine. Um, in Haverhill, Massachusetts. You're going to be coming to, okay. Yes, I'll be coming to Haverhill quite often. I'm working with James A. Moore and Christopher Golden of River City Writers, so we'll be teaching in November. And then I'm also co-hosting with them in Portland, Maine at the Portland Public Library mm -hmm. on Monument Square. We will be doing a free writer's coffee house and Ooh, that's open yeah. to about 30 people yeah. and it's wonderful. What It's our opportunity. We do this a few times a year. We love to give back to the local writing community. So mm -hmm. each time we do it at a different location, usually a different state in New England. This time it's the fir this will be our first time in Maine. Okay. So we'll be doing that in Portland, Maine and we'll be sharing everything that we've learned on our writing journey. This sounds like a lot of fun. And you said you started when you were a child. So many authors start yes. when they're young. I used to write little things, but it never really went anywhere. But my son, he could not only write, but he'd illustrate it. They're pretty gory, but and he's a poet, but he doesn't know it. I mean, he right. he's 24. You, I can't say, I couldn't get him to encourage him. I, I would look at them. I'm like, they're like, almost like haikus. They don't right. have to rhyme, but they're terrific. Yes. I don't know if he'll ever do anything with it. But there was something when he was a kid. I picked up on it. I saw what he was doing. But sometimes with some kids, they don't 
get it. They don't realize it. Or maybe have the confidence. Oh, no, I'm not that good. Yes, you are. And confidence is a big part of this. And I think that's why when we do our free writer's coffee house, we really try to make it open to everyone. You don't have to have already published. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to really consider yourself a writer. Yeah. But you have a, if you have a, a passion for writing or an interest in writing, please come out. We have a good time. It's a very safe and open environment to ask questions or share something that you've uh, had happen sure. along the way. Yeah. We have New York Times bestsellers. We have traditionally published authors. We have authors who've had movies made of their novels. And then yeah. we have people That's who great. have never published at all. Okay. It's a wonderful time. I can see you teaching these and being a very, very good teacher. Thank um, you. People can see that you're excited about it. I can yes. see it in your eyes. You yes. love what you do. One more time, how can people get Hound's Bite? <laughs> you can find Hound's Bite at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes. You can also find my books at Audible.com, iTunes, and Amazon if you enjoy audiobooks. And the translations are available worldwide. That's pretty cool. That is very cool. <laughs> and pretty soon, once you have your DVD here, not only will you be on our, our uh, network, but you're going to be on your own, and you're going to have a fun run with it, put Wonderful. it up in Maine, the whole nine yards. Let me know when your next one comes out. Definitely. All right. It's got to be. I don't know. She, this girl has got more courage to come down from Maine, and we. Ha- but they're getting further and further, and they're coming further. And further. Right. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Right. I would. I. I'm a terrible traveler. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Well, I just drove all the way to New York City for a Comic Con last week. So Alone? I did drive with another author, so that was that was a bit safe. How long did that take? About five, four or five hours? I think it was about seven. Oh, uh, so. because we went to Long Island. <laughs> yes. See, that would be torture to me. Did you stop along the way for coffee? We did. Oh yes, we're writers, so we stopped for a lot of coffee. Yeah, and other kinds yeah. of breaks, right? Oh my God! All right. Well, listen, EJ, it's been fun to have you here. Drive safe on your long drive home. Thank you very much. All right, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer Than it seems Through the cloudless sky Heading out toward the moon I am dancing to The lunar tune Life goes by so quickly Time just slips away But tomorrow brings a brighter day Soaring out among the planets